Hello, welcome to this quick video in which I'm going to answer the question, what is Cisco ACI? So the first answer, it's the easy one, what does it stand for? So Cisco ACI stands for the Cisco Application Centric Infrastructure. Now this was brought out by Cisco, announced to the world in 2014. So it's quite a new technology. So that was broadcast to the world in 2014. And what Cisco ACI does is it's designing the data center networks with a focus on the application uh, rather than just the boxes and connecting them together that your data center is comprised of. So it's trying to look at developing a network infrastructure that is focused on the application and the intent of the network. So more that you want to bring up an application and enabling that and reducing that barrier of entry onto the network. I'm just going to do a very quick diagram on the sort of current existing network topologies that exist in most data centers. And that would typically be on a Nexus platform. Maybe we got some seven Ks here. And then down here, we'd have some 5Ks. And then you'd have some topper rack switches. And these would be Nexus 2Ks. Now this would all, all be uh, joined together redundantly like this. So that's a rough setup. Now, in here, you would have a VLAN. So let's say we've got VLAN 10. And we would configure that VLAN and we put these ports into VLAN 10. So we'd have to configure the VLAN switch here and we'd have to configure the VLAN here. And then you could add these ports into that VLAN and if you wanted to, these ports. And if you had a group of servers then that sat in VLAN 10, you could have a server here and you could have another server there. So for those servers to then talk to each other, they are in the same layer two broadcast domain, which actually then spans all these switches here. So we have to have that VLAN available on this trunk, this trunk, this trunk, this trunk, and on here and on here. And you've got no way to actually stop any talking between these devices and if you wanted to control that then you would normally have a firewall that would either sit in here somewhere or even further up uh, you have a firewall at this level so to for any sort of security in this in the network between these servers the traffic has to go up here and get blocked and then come down here so this solution whilst working very well um, but with the applications that are being developed now does not scale um, hugely well we're also limited here into 4,000 odd VLANs across this and spanning tree issues are still relevant in here so that's the sort of current situation or what it was a few years ago let's go into Cisco ACI and what that consists of so Cisco ACI mainly uh, runs or predominantly runs on the Nexus platform, mainly the 9300 switches. And the standard topology of a ACI fabric consists of leafs and spines. So this one, these are considered as spines. And then we would have the switches down here, which are called leaf switches. Every leaf switch is connected to every spine. And these links are all layer three rooted links. So what we've now set up here are redundant links to both spines. And this is all layer three point to point links, which means we can set up equal cross multipathing between all of these links. Now typically um, this would run 
ISIS, it can run OSPF, but in the so in the VXLAN world, if you were going to configure this manually, this is the same kind of fabric that we'd use in VXLAN. So VXLAN that could use OSPF or ISIS in here, but when you use Cisco ACI, uh, this uses ISIS in here to provide the routing between all these devices. Now you don't actually get to influence that very much. Uh, when a Cisco ACI fabric is brought up, you have what they call an APIC controller. So this is the controller in here. And this connects into the devices. And when you turn on all the switches, they're all connected together. The APIC discovers through CDP what's connected and provisions everything as, it's, as it stands up. Now, once we've got this enabled, then what happens is BGP is enabled. And BGP is actually what announces all the multicast addresses, the, the, um, the MAC addresses, between all these devices. So BG is a special uh, address family within BGP. And if we have a device in here that comes on the network, its MAC address needs to be advertised into the network. And this is advertised via BGP to all the other devices. Now the beauty of this is that everything from here is all layer three. So everything in this is layer three and above. So what we can do with ACI is we can have VLAN 10 here, and we can have another server here in VLAN 10, we can have another server here in VLAN 10 and also one in there. But there is no layer two between here. There's no spanning tree. There's no issues to contend with in that respect. Every VLAN 10, now it actually isn't VLAN 10, uh, within your ACI fabric, this would be a much higher number, but just for this example, we're gonna call it 10. So this, could be extended across this entire fabric, but you are going to face no layer two issues because it's being encapsulated. So the traffic from here, when it leaves this switch, it's encapsulated, it's routed layer three up here, and it's routed back down there, layer three, then it's decapsulated and then popped onto the, the layer two aspect. Also, as an optimization, the gateway, so if we have VLAN 10 and the gateway is 10, 10, 10 10.1, so that's the gateway for this VLAN, that v, um, brought default gateway exists as an AnyCast address on here, and it exists on here, and here, and here. So that's another optimization in that any servers that are connected under here don't need to be routing all across the network to find the default gateway. They will hit this switch as their default gateway. The server here will hit there as its default gateway. That's another optimization. And then we'll go into this much deeper in future videos, but if you want to then restrict access between servers, so if you've got servers in this VLAN that you don't want some talking to, it's very simple to then block uh, this server talking to that server within the fabric uh, without having to worry about firewalls externally. And before I wrap this video up, I just want to say there's uh, an, another great benefit with ACI is that when you want to expand your fabric, so you've now maxed out this topology, you've got every switch here is loaded with servers. The way to do that is very simple and you just add in another spine. You can put another spine in here and then again, you just join them up and you can bring in more leaf switches and you just extend the fabric out on an east to west direction. And on top of that, if you wanted to extend this fabric and you extend your ACI into another data center, you then build another one in another data center here. And if you wanted to then connect this one to this one, it's just simply a layer three connection. Now you can either go um, out at the back or in the front, we'll, we'll discuss that 
in other videos but say we're going to connect between leafs here we could actually connect these two just literally via layer 3 link so because all the traffic is encapsulated uh, at that level everything above here is layer 3 so I could have this VLAN 10 exist also down here in my other data center but this layer 2 domain is not stretched all the way across the world it's around here it's only exists in this position here once it hits that border the traffic is decapsulated or encapsulated layer 3 routed to these and then it can be also layer 3 routed so you can put this in another data center you can put it anywhere where you've got layer 3 connectivity uh, there are some limitations of course on sort of delay on the links uh, but so within you know within at least within the same country you can put another ACI setup in a different data center and as long as you've got layer 3 connectivity between them uh, they can route and you can extend out this fabric so that is uh, pretty much in a nutshell a very very high overview of Cisco ACI um, in the next video I'll be going through more detail about the Nexus 9300s and various options and then future videos we'll look at setting up a base fabric uh, with an APIC simulator so I hope you enjoyed that brief rundown if you've got any questions please do leave them in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you